Okay, yeah. Oh, you'll learn. Don't worry. Hey, I'm just gonna, I'm on a live here. <laughs> Hello, beautiful Facebook family. How are you doing? Uh, my son and I were just having a little chat about superpowers, actually. And so, let's see, uh, let's see what today's chat comes, uh, what comes up in our little chat. So as you're hopping on, let me know where you're tuning in from. And if you're watching the replay, just give me a hashtag replay so that I can know that you're receiving me. So today I really want to talk about um, using your, your abilities and your gifts um, and creating a business or running a side business or, you know, attracting income and financial abundance using your gifts. This is a touchy subject. <laughs> Because there's a lot of people who feel uh, that gifts should be free. Um, and then there are a lot of us who are using our gifts directly in our businesses to, to support our, ourselves and our families and our lives and to pay our bills. And I would love to open this conversation with you. Where do you sit on this spectrum? Do you feel a little bit resistant about it? Or are you like, you know, we, we, we get to live in this world and money is a blessing and money is spiritual. I would love to hear from you uh, in your, oh, uh, hi, Natalia. P DM me, would you? <laughs> I've been trying to get a hold of you. Hi, Amy. Hi, Anna. Hi, Ali. Yeah. Um, so I feel like this could be a really cool way to kind of talk about money uh, and business in as you know we talk about higher earth or new earth um, and, and what we're creating and and business and we really are here at a time where humanity is changing a lot changing what we're doing you know the generations who are coming up now have really different ways of, of viewing like different things like culture and religion and sexuality and gender um, and stereotypes and and so and money and business and government and health and all of these different things are 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 the same we get to look at it and 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 make changes how do we want to actually do business do commerce do do life <laughs> do exchanging how does that actually look in higher earth and i would love to talk about this with you today it's, i actually had no idea what i was going to talk about today and then all of a sudden it was like boom it's this because <laughs> i did put a question in the group um a couple of days ago about if i ran a workshop uh, on how to start your spiritual business how to how to know how to start charging and and doing it in a really ethical higher earth way would you come and i had a lot of people who put their hand up and so if this is you if you would like to come and do a workshop with me um i have been running my business now for nine years uh through covid and everything and i have been through it all i've pivoted a hundred thousand times <laughs> and my business has grown as I have grown and changed myself. Um, and so I have a really cool and unique perspective on business. I did not go to business school. Mm -mm. No, nope. I did it uh, the classic Haley way, which is bull in a china shop. I'm like, I need to do this. I want to do this. And I just felt this urge, right? I felt this passion and this desire to help people while also receiving abundance at the same time. And um, I would love to teach you all how I did it and how you can do it and help you tune into what your specific gifts are and, and how you can use them and why, for what purpose. How are you going to help people? Who are you going to help? How to collect money and how to do it in a way that's really helpful for, for you. Um, I've dropped a link to sign up to this, um, to sign up to this workshop in the description above. And so, um, but the conversation, yes, hi. Natalia says it's an exchange of energies. You give spiritual energy. Other people share money, physical energy. Absolutely. I, I see it that, uh, I see it as that way as well. And furthermore, 
the energy of money to me, energy is a conscious being. <laughs> energy isn't, I mean, money is not the paper that it's printed on. It's like we're not the, the we're not the meat that we're that we live in. Um, you know, we are. Everything is energy, and everything is an exchange of energy. Uh, and so, thank you for sharing that, Natalia. Let's let's pull a card. Let's uh, let's see what the cards have to say on this subject. Okay, it has a lot to say apparently. And so, I'm using my old good old deck, uh, the star seed, the star seed oracle. So let's talk a little bit about why we have resistance. Why, why, why there is resistance in the spiritual community around money and about charging for gifts. And let's see. Ooh, okay, doors are opening. Portal, you decide. Rewards and wild card. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Money is a doorway, isn't it? Money is a portal. <laughs> it's 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 an agreement money is simply a social agreement between between humans um in, in a way to exchange energy <laughs> energy in the form of food or shelter or or services or or products or right money is a portal thank you i really like that way of, of looking at it um and and you get to decide this is this is what this card is saying as well you get to decide whether you accept money as a portal, as a doorway, whether you get to accept money and, and I don't like this word reward. Reciprocation is more the, the word that, that comes through for me. You get to decide whether you accept it or not. And so this goes back to what I was saying just as I pulled this card. Why are some of us um, resistant to receiving money? Why do some of us have a hard time, you know, we have to work for our money and that's why. <laughs> we have a lot of programming um, and thoughts and feelings and emotions around money, okay? Uh, a question for you is if you were in a relationship with money, would you be a very good partner? Would you like to be a partner with yourself? Okay, uh, especially if we think that money is the root of all evil, right? Money is greed. You know, we look at all these rich people and we look down at them and we mock them and we see that they do terrible things. And, you know, money is, 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 is you know, why a lot of people are fighting and, and, you know, it's not fair, right? There's a lot, there's, there's so much programming and beliefs and feelings around money. Um, and so you get to choose you get, we get to choose our thoughts and our, and our programmings and our beliefs. Um, the first step to doing that is knowing what they are. <laughs> because we can't, we can't reprogram uh, our beliefs and our emotions and our experience with money and everything else, by the way. We happen to be talking about money today, but everything else. Without knowing what we actually believe, right? Without understanding our, our conscious and, and subconscious and unconscious feelings and emotions around money. And, but we get to, de to decide in the end how we, how we interact with it. Whether we can open up our portal to receive. Okay, let me just see. Checking the... Cool. Nice. Let me just see there's something else. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of us also, so it's not just kind of generational programming, it's not just cultural programming, but it's also past life. Um, there are a lot of us who, who have been really, really, really poor in, in the past, in past lives. We, there, there are also there are those of us who have been really, really, really persecuted from people with money. <laughs> mm-hmm, thank you. <laughs> There are, uh -huh, thank you, there's a lot of information coming through now. There are those of us who have been really, really, really persecuted for, for having gifts and selling our gifts. I don't like that wording, but mm, like, uh, so selling spells and selling profits and selling um, like balms and tinctures. I mean, back in the day, herbal medicine was considered witchcraft, right? And so, you know, the, the energy exchange that we got for these things, we were really persecuted. We were persecuted for having gifts full stop. But then when we were actually like making a living using these gifts, we were really persecuted, okay? So, uh, and 
there are those of us who have had past lives where we have been very abundant and rich and wealthy and we have done terrible things. <laughs> terrible things. And so all this, this programming around money is really complex and it's really multidimensional. It's really multifaceted. Okay. And so when we, when we start our spiritual businesses, we get to, I tell you what, having a business and particularly a spiritual business is the most activating. I don't like the word triggering activating, um, you know, experience other than parenthood that I can think of <laughs> because it really, your business is you. Okay. And so your experience in your business is a direct reflection of your experience with yourself. <laughs> and so man, like starting a spiritual business is such an, an incredible and expansive journey into yourself because you get to pull out all of this programming and sit and see it really clearly and choose, choose to receive. <laughs> okay. Because you know what? They're not gifts. No one gave them to you. They are skills and they are abilities that you have fostered and nurtured and developed. And, and if you want to start a spiritual business, it's because you have that urge, that want and that desire to help other people and bring in higher earth into here and now, bring heaven on earth here and now and make changes because we see what can be changed. Rant over. <laughs> How is that sitting for all of you? <laughs> so money is definitely a touchy subject. I can feel that. Hey, Nicole, how are you? Hmm. Okay. Let me just see where this dinging is coming from. Okay. Okay. So if you would like a, a, a card, I'm absolutely, I'm here to pull cards for you. It doesn't have to be around money. It can be about around whatever you'd like. And if you would like to reciprocate my energy with financial abundance, I have dropped my PayPal link uh, in the description above. Um, and I absolutely love receiving from all of you. So, hi, okay. Hey Kim, hey Michelle, hey Charlene, how are we doing? Yes, Charlene, you may have a card. Nicole would like a card. <laughs> okay. All right, Charlene. Let's tune in. Ooh. Hmm. Okay, this is funny. <laughs> you got the love. Hedarian energy, codependency and boundaries. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, this is so, this is so synchronous, uh, because, okay, because I'm currently recording a program called Making Love and Money. <laughs> and we have just talked about, in my program, codependency and, and boundaries and attachment styles, not just to humans, um, but to love and money itself. <laughs> Because love is a frequency, is an energy, right? And and so is money. <laughs> okay, let's 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 rewind. <laughs> so <laughs> that's just it's so funny. <laughs> okay, Charlene, you got the love, girl. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so this is for a couple of other people in here, Jim. This is for for you as well. There's a couple other people who wanted love readings in here, and this is for you. Codependency. Okay, hang on, go back. Let me do, I'm tuning in to where to start. Mm hmm. Okay, okay. Have you ever heard of anxious and avoidant attachment styles? And uh, anxious, anxious attachment styles is when you tend to really need within yourself and it, it's, it feels a little bit anxious in your body. Like I need this in attention. I need this person to complete me. Okay. I'm really attracted to this person, but not from a place of, not from a place of peace and respect and boundaries and love, but more of like this, it's a need, right? If you, if you've ever felt that, that's, we call that anxious attachment styles. 
Um, and we tend to be anxiously attached to people or attracted to people from a wounded place that we are codependent on, okay? And who are we codependent on is really interesting. We get to look at our past relationships. Okay, if we're talking about love, then our past partners and our past romantic partners to see what that person is providing to us. Okay, because there's a limiting belief that that person is providing evidence for. Okay, and I'll, I'll use myself as an example. I was um, codependent on men who were emotionally unavailable for a long time. Okay, and, and how I learned that is I looked back at my past and I was like, well, it's pretty clear as day, really. And so what was the limiting belief that all of these people were providing evidence for was that I'm not worthy, basically. I'm not worthy of attention. I'm not worthy of love. I'm, I, right? I'm not worthy of having emotions because I'm too much. My emotions are too much. And so they would just shut down. Okay, and so me being attracted to and attracting these particular people right and on the on the flip side of that i was providing evidence for those people as well okay because when you have atta anxious attachment styles you tend to attract people with avoidant attachment styles which are those people who are emotionally unavailable they're like whoa nope the more you come at me the more i'm going to distance myself the more i'm going to shut down right this is different attachment styles and codependency uh, and basically what's actually happening is both sides of the codependency and the attachment styles have the same limiting belief, actually. And it tends to be I'm not worthy. Okay, so the anxious person person is codependent on the avoided person because they're both, they're both telling each other the same story and it feels comfortable. It feels comfortable within myself that... Of course I'm not worthy. So you, the more I want you, the less you want me. And so that feels really good in my body because you're confirming everything that I believe about myself. <laughs> right? And so, and vice versa, you're coming at me, but I'm not worthy of your love. And so I'm going to distance myself. And what actually happens is it, it tends to flow. <laughs> right? And so the avoidant person eventually... No, the, the anxious person eventually will start going like, well, then, you know, you don't love me and they'll start to, to drift away. And then that triggers the, uh, the avoidant person into anxious. Oh, now that you don't want me, I want you because you, I'm not worthy. And it's this, I'm not worthy, like bounce back and forwards. <laughs> and that's called codependency. <laughs> what a card! Like what a, I literally just downloaded, uh, recorded this, this conversation into my group. Um, and <laughs> how funny. So, <laughs> all of that to say, mm -hmm, thank you very much. All of that to say, oh, without going too far into it, all of that to say, you got the love. That's this card. You got the love. Which is why when, when people are doing love readings, and that's not me, I don't do love readings. <laughs> the advice and the guidance that tends to come through is, can you love yourself first? Right? And I know it's like, I hate that. I don't, Ugh. it's not fun. It's not fun guidance. No one wants to hear that. But what, what we're doing by saying, can you love yourself first, is we're collapsing codependency, we're collapsing attachment styles, and we're bringing all of that awareness into yourself. Can you sit in love with yourself first? Because you got the love. And that's it. Is that helpful? That was a lot. <laughs> Okay, Charlene, <laughs> Charlene, is that helpful? Jim, was that helpful? Everyone else, was that helpful? And, and if it was helpful, <laughs> yeah, Angie says, yes, exactly, self-love is most important. Ah, Charlene says, thank you, you're so welcome. <laughs> if you would like to talk, if you would like to join me in this conversation uh, about attachment styles, codependency, uh, empathy, um, you know, energy uh, and, and, and how to create strong boundaries as an empath particularly, please do reach out because we are actually, 
um, accepting a new wave of people into this program that I'm calling Making Love and Money, which is all about flipping the switch, using your exact mechanisms of how you uh, suck in and, and, and uh, mm, interact with other people's energy. Uh, and we're, we're, we're actually flipping the switch to, to understand how we attract more love and money in our life. So, uh, so yeah, if you enjoyed kind of that little, that little chat, please do reach out to me. Uh-huh. Natalia says it makes sense when you compare money relationship with a reg with a regular relationship, right? Exactly. You, you are having a relationship and you can be codependent and you can, you can be anxiously or avoidantly attached to money or to love itself, right? It's a really cool, uh, interesting way of looking at everything. Um, so yeah, again, Natalia, I would like to talk to you by the way. All right. Who's next? Okay. Uh, Amy. Let's do a card for you. Uh, if you would like to secure your reading, please do drop a little donation into my PayPal. That is how you will guarantee yourself a reading. Uh, if not, that's totally fine. It's just that I may or may not be drawn to your name. So, hi, Amy. Nice to see you. Haven't, haven't been in your energy field for a little while, so um, really happy to have you here. Child of the cosmos, the intelligence of the universe lies within you. Mm, mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Amy, I really feel like you're stepping into this next, like this, this, this next chapter of, of your life. Excuse me. You know a lot. You, you're, you really do. You know a lot and you have a lot of the pieces of the puzzle of, of your, for yourself. You have a lot of the knowledge and the intelligence of the universe. This is what this card is saying. You you know a lot of it, and the next step for you is embodying it, trusting it, knowing it. Knowing it here and knowing it here are really two different, very different things, and living it and breathing it. And so embodying just means like taking what you know and acting on it. That's all it means. Um, and, and, and daily, right, every day. Uh, and so this is what they're showing me is that you are starting to feel. So you know that you're a child of the cosmos. You know a lot of information. You know you know how to do things, but perhaps you're not taking action. You're not embodying it. But what's starting to happen is you're starting to realize. It's starting to sink in. It's starting to sink into your cells and your pores and your DNA and your water. Right, and you're starting to be like, oh shit, I am a child of the cosmos. It's becoming an inner knowing rather than a than a understanding. Right, that's the difference. Um, so, so is there any advice for her? Or? No, they're just like, let it, let it, let it, let the knowing settle into your body and start to start to tune into what that feels like. What's the difference between understanding and knowing? What a what I'm writing that down. <laughs> understanding versus knowing right there's a la there's a layer of trust here um that 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 they would like you to start to feel into so i hope that's helpful <laughs> yes 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 that totally makes sense working in that currently for sure awesome fabulous all right oh hi angie Sure, I'll pull a card for you. Hang on. <laughs> no worries. You're so you're so welcome. All right, hey Angie. Ooh, Angie, holy, your frequency has changed since last I tuned into you. Hey, that's nice. Ooh, yeah. Well. <laughs> I remember soul plan, the faded life versus the destiny life. This is basically the same information here um i remember is like no, is that knowing i'm remembering mm -hmm, hang on let me just get it for you i remember soul plan i can't they're, sh they're showing me mm, Ooh. okay cool what they're showing me f with you is like 
it's almost like you're looking at your purpose and your soul plan through a telescope right now. This is what they're showing me. Take it or leave it. And you're you're a little bit kind of detached from it. You're like, I, I, I see it. And this is, again, the same as like understanding it versus knowing and embodying it. You're like, I, I get it. But you're kind of, for, for whatever reason, they're showing me that you're distanced from it a little bit. Okay. And why are you showing me this? Hmm. There's a part of you, and again, take it or leave it, that doesn't quite believe that you're ready for it or that you're like, you don't deserve it yet. Because like the, the, what they're showing me through the telescope is like a kaleidoscope of fucking joy and abundance and a lot of energy and light and colors and it's flamboyant and it's so, 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 so beautiful. But you're kind of, sh they're showing me that, yeah, you're distancing yourself and you're kind of keeping yourself in the dark a little bit because there's a part of you who's like, I'm not ready or I don't deserve it. Or is there, the, is there something else? It's a bit scary. Yeah. And fuck yeah, it's scary. Living your life purpose is totally scary. <laughs> and being out there and talking about yourself and your gifts and using your gifts and receiving money and receiving attention and receiving reciprocation and receiving all of that, like that high frequency. And so is there, is there advice for her? Mm -hmm. so it's an inner child. So address your inner child to remove the fears. Yeah. 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 We know that already. Like this is nothing new for Angie. Oh, <laughs> thank you. So they're saying, <laughs> cool. Okay. So they're saying, because it's a little bit overwhelming, this huge, this huge energy. What if you can just like open up just a little bit and just let that little tiny, teeny, teeny bit in and start to acclimatize to that frequency, start to sh use that energy that's available to you to start shifting the darkness and to start bringing in that color right now. Like you don't have to like, whoop, I'm here. Right? What if, what if you just open up just a tiny little bit, use the telescope. Yeah. Like just bring in a little bit of that light through that telescope into the darkness and, and start using it to weave. Thank you. Is that helpful? Cool. All right. I hope that's helpful, Angie. <laughs> okay. All right, Hannah, no problemo. You are next. So um, Hannah's just donated through my PayPal, so she is next. Angie, I want to know if that's helpful or not. <laughs> because that was that was a, like slightly more personal than I would... Yeah, okay. Lol, so true. I see it. It's big. It's beautiful, but scary as hell. Yes, girl. Love the analogy. So good. Sweet. Love you. All right, Hannah. <laughs> by the way this this oh, that that little thing opened up a little question i heard on, on a couple of people like why are the readings that i give a little bit general well <laughs> because on a public platform i'm not going to be like sharing it's not ethical for me even even if you give me permission which you do by saying i want a reading you give permission <laughs> that's why I'm able to access you and that's why I feel ethically uh, able to to access you I, I'm not gonna share really personal shit on a public platform I mean this goes on my YouTube yeah and so if you would like a more in-depth and personal reading then we do that in private so that's the answer to that question hi Hannah <laughs> really uh, no, I don't want to use the same card. <laughs> I want a new card for Hannah. So a financial pull for Hannah. Ooh, yeah. Okay, that changed the frequency. Thank you. It was the same card. Okay, well, I pulled this card twice for you. I didn't want to use it. And I've already... I've, I've, okay, but here it is. Soul plant. I remember. <clears throat> okay, let's see what Hannah has to say. Ooh, oh, okay, thank you very much. So, hmm, 
Ah, okay, awesome. This brings us back to the money conversation that we had at the beginning about limiting beliefs and programming and past life trauma around money. Um, because that's, mm -hmm. okay, huh. fuck, I love these readings. And it's combining in what we, what we think and what we know, because what you're doing currently is what you think you should be doing to, to receive money, not what your soul knows it's doing. Like you're living kind of what someone's told you. Someone's told you, this is how you make money. And, and you're doing the things and like, I'm not, there's no fucking judgment here whatsoever. And you're doing it and you're taking action and I love you and you're amazing. But you're slightly like you're, you're out of alignment. And so what this card is saying is to remember your soul plan. Why are you here? What are your gifts? Who are you here to serve? What are you here to birth? What are you here to create? And why, why, why did you come, right? You're, you're playing, and again, this might feel a little bit personal, and, and, and it's not. They're just like, they're like, you're playing in this kind of this here, and they want you to play here. Like, they want you to, you're, yeah, exactly. You're playing with this, which is perfect, but now they want you to play with all of it. Mm. What's the urge? Like, what, what, what's the passion? And that's, that's when the money abundance is going to be like, whew. is that helpful? Do you want more information? Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, hey, Hannah, I feel this. You're fine. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So let, let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And if you would like to have a conversation about that with me, Hannah, then I'm really open to that. Um, because you and I have been dancing around each other for quite a long time. It might be time to have a deeper conversation. Let me just see. Hang on. You know what it is, though. <laughs> Your heart knows what it is. I can feel it. I can feel it. Okay. Uh-huh. Now I'm feeling resistance between the knowing. And we can, we can call it ego, but whatever. I can feel like a little bit of resistance because your ego is like, oh, the ego is like, well, it's worked for her. And the ego is like, I was told to do it this way. And the ego is like, right, it, it's been shown something and it's like really holding on to doing that. And your heart's like, what we get to do is bring the ego into alignment with the heart because that, that produces exponential growth when, both, when, when all aspects of yourself are going after the same thing. Thank you. Um, then you have exponential growth. Is that helpful? Hang on. You can go deeper. I get it. Mm -hmm. So true. Laugh, laugh my ass off. I know it just won't fucking come out. What won't come out? Rowena says, I had a spiritual awakening last year. I'm feeling really lost right now. I need like a card. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my suggestion, Hannah, would be to do some like ego healing. Or you can even like, you don't have to do a healing per se. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it won't come out the heart alignment. I think you and I should have a conversation uh, off out of the public realm um so you can dm me after this okay yeah okay let's see there's a couple more i'll do a couple more if anyone would really like a reading um please please do donate into my paypal and you will guarantee a reading um otherwise let's see <laughs> Okay, Hannah's laughing. <laughs> ah, cool, let's see. All right, Justin. Hi, Justin. I have never met you before. You're new. You're new to me. Oh, Tonya just sent PayPal. Okay, I'll do, I'll do Tonya first. Uh, t uh, Justin, if you're still on, give me, give me a question or something specific or... Um, what 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 you want to chat about all right tonya how are you haven't seen you in a little while <sighs> mm 
Thank you. Star Ancestors, Hidden Secrets, Lost Wisdom, Look a Little Deeper. All right. Tonya. You're, uh, Tonya, you already know this. So this is just a validation for you. Oh, hang on. I feel a little bit of fear come in. Uh, oh, fuck. Really? Hey, okay. Huh. So th again, this is that difference that we were talking about, like kind of knowing. Yeah, I'm a star seed. I believe... There's a difference between I believe that I was here, um, that I've had past lives. Thank you. This is this is gold. There's a difference between believing and knowing um, and, and understanding that yeah, I've had past lives and I've probably been here in Egypt and you know um, I've probably had past lives on different planets and like it, right. It's kind of surface level and there's a difference between that and like experiencing it and connecting in with those versions of self and actually receiving information. It's that pull that you have, and I feel that you do have a pull towards Egypt and ancient Egypt, right? That's the knowing. That's the heart knowing versus the understanding. Um, let's just see. And uh -huh. Okay, so where did the resistance come from? Hidden secrets, lost wisdom, and look a little deeper. So this is definitely an invitation to dive into your past lives. Um, to dive into, especially Egypt. If you're drawn to ancient Egypt, okay? Well, you, there's, there's a bazillion guided meditations around ancient Egypt on YouTube. Pick one, dive into it, and, and set the intention to connect in with that version or versions of yourself who are living there right now because they they are available to you and they are wanting to come through because they have they have secrets they have information for you they have wisdom for you um, and that's going to really help you uh -huh, okay thank you thank you it's going to help that resistance that i felt when i first came in you were like <sighs> your body was like i don't i don't i don't know about that i don't like that um, I felt some resistance and re contraction from it, probably because, hang on, let me just get it. Probably because people were going to think you're crazy. <laughs> and that comes from programming, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Cool, perfect. Egypt is the gateway for you into your star ancestors because, okay, whether you trust it or believe it or not, the ancient Egyptians hung out with the Pleiadians and the Arcturians. <laughs> that's just, that's just, it. That's, it, that's what it is. <laughs> and so ancient Egypt, right? So you have this, this resistance to your star ancestors because people are going to think you're crazy. Ancient Egypt, you, you're like, okay. I mean, the, ancient Egypt, you can go to Egypt and see the pyramids. You can see the hieroglyphs. You can see the mummies. Okay. That's real. It's tangible and it exists for you. Okay, and so ancient Egypt is your gateway to your star ancestors because when you start receiving information from them, they're, they're very gently and slowly going to be bringing in more information about the star ancestors and that's how you connect in with, with your star seed past. That was cool. That was really cool. That was really interesting. How'd that, how'd that sit, sit, Tonya? Was that interesting? That was really cool. Thank you for that. I love these. <laughs> I love these reading sessions. Past lives is always something coming up. I will dig into the Egypt gateway. Yeah, Egypt gateway. Boom. <laughs> love that. Um, I also run a program called Mission Mapping <laughs> that takes you to ancient Egypt, to Lemuria, to Atlantis, to Avalon, to Arcturus, to Sirius B, to uh, Andromeda, and we we go, we go, we, and we we go, and we connect in with these past lives, so that you can understand who you are, who you've been, why you're here, why you're why you're e e human right now, and, and to to drop in to the knowing because you experience it for yourself. You're not just like you're not just seeing it, right? You're 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 experiencing it for yourself, and that's how you go from knowing to knowing <laughs> understanding and believing to like uh, embodying that's how you do it 
um, by, 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 by experiencing it. Um, so yeah, if you would like information about mission mapping, please, please do reach out. It's a, it's a pretty life changing little, little program. <laughs> All right. One more. Let's do one more. So the next per, so Justin, are you still here? I think Justin left. So the next person to comment, um, will be the, the last person that I will read unless someone, uh, donates to my PayPal. And so I just want to say thank you so, so, so much for everyone for hopping on with me, um, for allowing me to channel some information here, the Egypt gateway, love it. The, the energy telescope, love it. The, the, the difference between understanding and knowing, uh, absolutely uh, adore this conversation. Hey, Rowena, I kind of figured it was going to be you, actually. <laughs> so, Rowena, I think you're new to me. Uh, let's just see. Yeah. Feeling lost in your spiritual awakening is part of it. <laughs> There's no other way of saying it. Like, you're not alone. You're, you're not doing it wrong. Uh, the feeling of being lost is, is, is just the being untethered from everything that you have been told is true your entire life and, and, and seeing something else, right. And, and kind of being in limbo between again, again, knowing that that's true, but embodying all the programming because you're kind of in between knowing and understanding, right? This conversation is just fucking genius. <laughs> so let's pull the last card. <laughs> oi. Oi, oi, oi. You guys. You guys. Oh. <laughs> and this is literally what you're doing right now. You're lifting the veil. Questioning anything. Anything unaligned must go, and that's what you're doing when we when we have a spiritual awakening. That's what we call, we 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 call it. We lift the veil, and we see everything. I mean, for, to me, spiritual awakening is the remembering that there is more to life than just this, right? And that's the veil. The veil that has been put over our eyes is programming and all of this stuff that we get told about there being one reality um that, that you have to see it to, to believe it you know this that this is all there is that the spirit world is nonsense right it's woo woo witchcraft bullshit voodoo hoodoo right and then when when the veil lifts and we actually remember the multi-dimensionality of the fucking universe and we actually start to experience and interact with energy itself with the quantum with all of the spiritual beings that are here and available to us we think that we're going crazy put your fucking hand up if you have ever thought that you're going crazy and literally it's the first thing that everyone as a mentor sits down in front of me they say you're going to think I'm crazy but <laughs> and I've never once <laughs> had someone who who actually made me think like fuck you're crazy <laughs> i've i've heard it all i've seen it all i've worked with thousands of clients and they all think that they're crazy but it all all it is is that you're seeing past the veil and you're questioning everything that you've been taught and programmed since you were a baby in this lifetime and many other lifetimes and generationally as well uh, and so you're not crazy you're not alone. There are resources out there for you. I am one of them. Um, if you are looking for someone to to support you through this and to and to t and to anchor you back into your remembering and your knowing and your heart knowing, then I am here for you. And that closes off this session absolutely beautifully. This is why, why I do what I do is to help people embody what they know, to bring all the information from their past lives, from their star ancestors down into earth right now to contribute to higher earth, um, to make these changes and to, to help humanity to grow uh, into, into love. That's it. That's it. Okay. <laughs> She's laughing. <laughs> Thank you. You're so welcome. So thank you everyone for being on with me. I'm Haley Freya Wilson. You can find me on my YouTube. Please do DM me and here, you want to you wanna come on? Hello. <laughs> this is Mr. Wolf. Yes, okay. So he wants me to go now. Okay, bye. <laughs>